Now, the rest of the story. It happened on the morning of August 20, many summers ago. Two American warships, their sails taut with wind, made their way toward port. The American commander standing on the flagship's deck was first to sight the enemy, a huge black vessel. Boasting cannon, it sailed suspiciously near an island in the distance. Captain Swensel had seen enough of war to know the peril of hesitation, so he gave the command to draw near and prepare for battle. The enemy were equally prepared. The enemy ship sails fluttering, solitary, black ship turned broadside and opened fire. The American flagship was struck, two of her crew wounded, two more killed. Her rudder damaged, she drifted helplessly lured. It was up to the second American ship now, and her commander, Stuart Pittman, moved in to engage the enemy. His was the first barrage. The black ship responded swiftly. Closer, cried Pittman. Soon the American vessel had drawn to within a hundred yards of the enemy. A hundred yards. American seamen frantically loaded their deck weapons now and fired three blasts, three hits, the third striking the black ship's hold, destroying one of her big guns at the same time. There there was an explosion aboard the enemy vessel, followed by screams of anguish. And then lifted high on the point of a sword and waved for the Americans to be sure to see a soiled white shirt. The enemy had surrendered. Captain Pittman pulled alongside, boarded the crippled black ship with several of his men. But the enemy skipper, though badly wounded, was nonetheless unwilling to admit defeat, and he waited in the hold, his pistol drawn. He waited for the American commander to enter. When Pittman entered, about to appear in this entryway, one of Pittman's men, seeing what was about to happen, fired his rifle at the enemy captain. The black ship's commander fell backward, and with his dying breath, with his dying breath, that captain related the rest of the story. But although indeed they were enemies, they had not anticipated a battle, had believed in fact that the two American warships were pirate ships. Nonetheless, the decision to fight had been a costly one. Forty-eight died on the black vessel. Thirty-five of the thirty-nine survivors were wounded. Now, all that I have just related is little more than a footnote in the history books on those rare occasions when the encounter is mentioned at all. Yet there's a very good reason for you to know what happened on August 20, 1945. That's right. August 20, 1945, when two American vessels, actually two Chinese junks, commandeered by the United States Navy, engaged a Japanese junk on its way to Shanghai, for more than four decades, school children have been taught that the final shot of the Second World War was a brilliant flash of light in the skies above Hiroshima. Yet there are some still alive who recall that the last battle of the greatest conflict of modern times was fought 14 days later with sabers and sailing ships and cannon and rifles and pistols. A pathetic postscript, like the ancient admonition that war, after all, is only war. Now you know the rest of the story.